And Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, this is Station. I'm ready for the event. European Space Agency, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. Kan se, Andreas Morsen siger de. De kan høre det i vores ører, nemlig. Ej, det er spændende. Ja, og ja. de kan se Andreas Morsen nu, så nu er der hul igennem. Nu begynder det, der hedder Start Connection. Ja. Har Andreas kaldt os? Andreas. Jeg glæder mig til, at jeg kan høre nogen. Står og lytter her. Hej. I'm looking... Hej, kan I høre mig? Vi er ready. Hej, kan I høre mig? Hej, Andreas. Vi kan høre dig. Hej, Andreas. Vi kan høre dig. Så er det jeres tur. Er I klar? Det var klart. Jeg kan også godt høre jer. Jeg kan høre dig også. Hej, Andreas. Ved du hvad? Det er Søren og helt Tivoli, der snakker her. Og jeg håber, at der er fyldt fuldstændig op med flæg. So many happy people here with flags that are waiting to hear what you have to say to the happy children who are here today. At first, we would like to hear how is it going for you and Rasmus Klump, the teddy bear up there. If they go fantastic, they got it. They go for rune. Fantastic. It's so great. On Sunday, I've been here for three months. It's so crazy to think about. This weekend, I am halfway through my six-month mission. Det lyder rigtig godt, Andreas. Virkelig dejligt. Yeah, so good. It's so good to see you. We've been looking so much forward to talking to you from Tivoli. And here, we have talked about that you are circling very fast around the Earth. And we saw that you were over the Pacific Ocean. Is it still dark where you were? Det er et godt spørgsmål. Um, jeg har That's a good question. I don't have any window in the Columbus lab where I am right now, so I can't see anything. But it changes every 40 to 45 minutes, and we change between day and night. So we see sight 16 sunsets and sunrises every 24 hours. It goes very, very fast. Here, It is still night time. Andreas, this is just for fun. Would, we would like to see that you are standing on the ceiling. Could you do that for us, please? Det kan jeg sagtens. Nu er der ikke rigtig noget, der hedder loppet og alt er det samme. There is nothing, um, you know, really a ceiling or floor here. It's all the same. So I can sit here. Uh, på den her måde. And then I can, I can turn myself like this. Tak for det, Andreas. Det ser virkelig, Thank virkelig, virkelig you, ud. Tænk, at vi kan lokke dig til. Bare lige sådan at vende dig på hovedet på den måde. Altså, mens vi It er i gang med at være sådan, at alle her tider kunne like virkelig godt tænke sig at se, Everybody here in at vi kan forstå sådan en helt koldbødt ord, der kan lokke dig. Så det er jeg til at se, hvis du kan lave et sommersalt op der. Kan du gøre det? Sagtens. Det eneste, der er lidt svært, det er, at der er så mange kabler. Det er bare en lille svært, fordi der er så mange vejer og kabler i lab. Hænger lidt fast. You get a little stuck. Lad mig lige prøve det igen. <laughs> Let me try again. Sådan der, det var lidt bedre. There you go. That was a little better. Ved du hvad, uh, vi er lige om lidt, så skal vi have fem meget spændte børn her. Just in a moment, we have, to, we have five children here, and before they start asking, could you, could you see if Rasmus Klump, the teddy bear, can spin around a little bit? Maybe he is better than you. Rasmus Klump har meget lidt ved at slå koldbøger. Rasmus Klump is doing this very easily up here. Ej, mange tak for det, Andreas. Det ser virkelig fantastisk ud. Thank you so much. Andreas, It looks amazing. Andreas, we have five children on stage. They're so looking forward to asking you questions. And the first one is Aya. Aya, please ask your question. How did you get on the space station 
out into space? How does the space station get all the way out there? That is a very good question. The space station is so big, you can't send it to the space at once. It was launched piece by piece, and it's 25 years ago this week that the first module or the biggest piece of the space station was sent up here back in 1998 on the 20th of November. This week, the space station turned 25 years old, and it's a little old. It took about 12 to 13 years to assemble the whole thing. And even if they say that it's done, it's not really done. There might be another one or two mo uh, modules coming up here next year or in a couple of years. Eskil has a question about the robot arm on the side of the space station that helps you get things up on the space station. Yes. I would like to ask, how does it work, and what do you use it for? The robot arm is one of our most important tools. It's 17 meters long. It can move around the outside of the space station. It can be guided from mission control on Earth or from up here from the space station. We use it for a lot of different things, to, to fix things that are broken on the outside. When we go on spacewalk, an astronaut can be on the inside and control it, and then the astronaut can be moved around or flown around uh, so that he or she can reach things that he otherwise couldn't reach. We also sometimes use it uh, when we get unmanned um, supply stations up here, and then we use the robot arm to to catch it and put it into the space station. I am so amazed that this can actually be done. We're talking to Andreas Monsen in the space station in space, and we have another question. My question is, can you extract water from a meteor and use it on Earth? God's first mode. Uh, new That's a good question. There are different kinds of meteors. Some of them are made almost exclusively of metal, and they likely don't contain water, but there are other meteors, asteroid, asteroids and comets that may have a lot of water, and we do think that there is water on the moon. So maybe we can, one day, if we create a base on the moon, extract water from there, uh, you, maybe you, you can drink it, you can also salt it and, and, and use it for um, breathing. So will it be a really, a really important If we find water on meteors and on the moon, it will be a very important resource moving forward. Thank you, Andreas. We have another question. From me. What is your favorite food on the space station? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. Can you repeat, please? What is your favorite food on the space station? My favorite food here on the space station? My favorite food my favorite dish. That is a very good question. The first two months, I thought the food was great. I did not mind eating it, but now I'm a little tired of the food up here. It's the same food we eat all the time. Not very much variation, and it's not a very exciting food. I brought some here today. We, even, we either get it in some packages. This is a package of lasagna, and I can just heat it up with the bag in our oven, open the bag, or we get a bag like this. This is a bag of asparagus. They are um, freezing, frozen dried, and, and I have to put in water and just wait five to ten minutes, and then I have asparagus. It's not... I, it's not very exciting. I'm looking very much forward to getting back to Earth and getting good food. So what do you eat during a day? Can you ask answer that, please? In the morning, I have granola with some dried milk that I pour water into for lunch. I might have some tortillas with chicken, 
uh, or, or some beef and for dinner. It's a little different. <laughs> it's the, 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 the least depressing thing is when I have to pick my food. Yeah. We have another question. What do you say? Uh, what are you saying? I'm sorry. The only thing I want to say, you can play with food and drink up here. It makes it a little more fun. You just have to really be careful. Let me see. I'll, I'll make a bubble without it spraying too much. Try to see if you can make it flow freely. Oh, give him a hand. It's a little bit more fun when you can play with your food. <laughs> the experiments that you're doing Uh, how how much can we use them down here? We have many, many different tests. We have a lot of different experiments. I'm make, doing one where I examine uh, mega lightning, uh, lightning that are shooting from the top of the clouds into space. They are um, they're blue and red. Mega lightning that are being shot. I luft. Maybe 50, 60, um, 70 kilometers into space. Og and they affect our uh, climate, uh, our weather, uh, and it uh, makes us more know more about the Earth's atmosphere, atmosphere and how it the influence it might have on our climate. We also make a lot of other experiments with uh, cleaning water, where we clean wastewater and make it into drinking water. We use all the water up here. Our, um, our pee is being cleaned and made into drinking water, and, and what I'm drinking here is something that has been cleaned before, and that is the technology we can use on the Earth. Oh, yummy. Very delicious. So what I'm drinking now, it was pee just a few days ago. And Andreas, all the five children have one question each, but I think we have the time for one more question from Aya. How did you find out that you wanted to be an astronaut? That happened when I was in grade four, fifth, or five, and I learned about NASA for the first time, the Apollo missions to the moon. I thought it was so fascinating, and I still think that. I think some of the most amazing thing that human has, humans have done is to land on the moon and open the hatch and just step out in this unknown world and get to explore it. I always thought it was so exciting, this exploration to, to, where we have to where we um, have to understand the world that we come from and who we are and what's out there. It's so amazing, and I, I find it so interesting to be um, exploring. And being an astronaut is like a modern yeah, way of, of, of exploring. Eskil has a question about something called a microchip. Eskil. That's great, Eskil. What is the question about microchip? What is the coolest or most useful thing you've programmed with a microchip? I have to be honest and say that I have not programmed a microchip yet, but I'm looking very much forward to finding out and seeing what you have done. I have a microbit up here, and hopefully I'll get to use it to perform some of the programs that you have made, that you have written. And I know Daniel has been considering... Is it true that if you don't work out your legs in space, Can you, will you then break your legs when you come back? And he's a little bit 
shy and did not want to ask you if you want to spin around again while you answer. Like spin around like this? Yeah, we don't use our muscles or bones up here. Og det vil sige, at vi langsomt mister That means that we slowly lose our bone mass and muscle mass. So ja, hvis vi our bones get a little weaker and if we don't work out, we have a greater risk of breaking our bone our legs, our bones if we fall when we get back on earth. Ja, vi har tid til spørgsmål mere, og det We have time for another question. Kan du mærke, at du bliver et par centimeter højere? Can you feel that you get a little bit taller when you're on the space station? Nej, jeg kan ikke selv mærke, at jeg bliver No, I can't feel it myself. That I get a little taller. I can't feel that. Men måske hvis jeg målte mig, så kunne jeg kunne måle det. But maybe if I measured my height, I could tell. Du du vil gerne vide noget med børn og hvordan de kan gøre verden bedre. And you would like to know something about kids and how they can make the world better. What can we children do to make the world better? Det er et godt spørgsmål. That is a very good question. Jeg vil sige, det bedste I sikkert kan gøre, det er I would say the best you can do is probably to read natural sciences or techniques in Technics become researchers and engineers because a lot of the challenges we have can probably be solved if we think about it very well and if we're clever and intelligent and, and make up good solutions. Natural sciences and techniques are, is, is, um, is a very useful thing to know in the future, so I encourage you to do that and become researchers or engineers. It's very exciting. It is also how we will find many solutions to the problems that we have. Daniel has a last Final question. It's about space. Is space infinite? And if not, what is the space inside? What is it inside of? It's a very good question. And that is why I think it's so fascinating to work with natural sciences, but also to be an astronaut. These are the types of questions that we're trying to find the answers for. The answer right now is we have no idea. Maybe we do. Uh, in the sense that, as far as I understand from the researchers, the universe is being created as it expands, which sounds very weird. We humans have a very hard time understanding how this can happen. But this is one of the reasons that natural sciences are so exciting, so because we're trying to understand how the universe was created and how it, and what will happen in the future, how it keeps on developing. We have one very quick question. How do you plan to celebrate Christmas on the space station? That's a good question. We can, can pick four days off during this time, and we pick Christmas, and we just hope there is some, there is nothing very, very exciting that we, or important we need to do. We hope to be off on Christmas Day. We have to just spend good time together and again have something to eat, look out the window, take photos, look down on Earth, talk to our friends and family, just relax. Our time is, a, is up, unfortunately. We have to wrap this up. But before we say goodbye, would you please say goodbye to all of the children that came in here and all the children that are listening all over Denmark? Yes, it has been so great to talk to all of you. I hope that you think it's been um, exciting to hear about. This is just one of the modules that we have up here. I wish that I could show you all of the modules up here. It's been such a pleasure to talk to you. And I think your questions have been great. Have a wonderful day and a great weekend when you get to it. Thank you. It was such a pleasure. pleasure. Say goodbye. 
Three, two, one. Bye, Andreas. Bye. Okay, bye. bye. Farvel, farvel. Det er simpelthen så super lettet lige nu, og hvor gik det bare fint. We are so Hold nu, relieved. Bare, it was, bare, it went so best. great. Tænk, What a party we had. So var, and we could talk to altså, Andreas Mogensen in space. It was so great. Vi kan måske Thank you, Andreas. Thank you for calling. Det var rigtig vildt. How do you think it was? It was crazy. Jeg slet ikke tro, at det her, det var rigtigt. Det var I can hardly believe this was true. It was so crazy. And how was it? Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes the event. Thank you to all participants in Copenhagen. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.